Okay, I don't know why a lot of these videos start off in this garage with the Z3 in the background. What's up guys? Hope you're having a great day. Today I'm going to be talking about, well, what I like and what I hate about this car. Obviously not including, like, you know, what's broken on it, nothing like that. Just the general pros and cons of owning a BMW Z3. So let's get started. Before we do uh, talk about what I like and hate about this car, I do have to first say I have a hat now. I have a hat, <laughs> but first I have, well, first of all, actually, I don't think this is a good spot to talk about what I like and hate, so I have the keys somewhere, here they are, and I'm gonna go and take this car out to probably a parking lot and film there, so yeah. This is a cold startup on a 1998 BMW Z3. Just like that, we made it to a parking lot. Um, well, to be fair, it's kind of a desolate parking lot. There's not that many cars, but I figured this would still be a better spot to film than that garage. I am in about five different parking spots because I decided to park like, you know, your average BMW driver would. Anyways, let's start with the actual reason you guys clicked on this video, what I like and what I hate about the car. So let's start with what I love. The first thing that I love about this car is the notoriety that it has little two-door british sports car and it was used in a james bond film not this exact car but the exact same spec of it atlanta blue with a tan interior was used in the 1995 film golden eye uh, i'll be honest i have not watched the film i cannot rate it good or bad but all i know is this is the car that james bond drove on the topic of the notoriety of the car for being in the james bond film we also have to talk about the looks of the car which is something that is amazing this car is from 1998, and I feel like if you made it today, no one would realize it because this car has aged so beautifully. I talked about this in the video where I explained why the Z3 is underrated. If you haven't watched that video, by the way, uh, link in the description, but I'm going to summarize it right here. Uh, the car has amazing curves on it. It has really nice arches. Yes, I have positive offset in the back. Uh, I'll work on that sometime in the next two decades. But honestly, it's aged amazingly, it's, no, it's very well known, and I, couldn't have, I don't think there's any better looking car on the market for this price point. And on the topic of the price point, we have to talk about the cost of the Z3. So this car costed me $6,200. Yes, it's broken, and yes, I have to pay a bit more to fix some things, but you can easily find a really well running manual uh, six cylinder Z3 for sub 10 grand. And if you want, you can upgrade to a BMW M Roadster, which is, which has the Z3 looks and the engine out of the E36 BMW M3 for barely 20 grand. And for 20 grand, you get basically an M3, but better looking. That's the deal of the century. These Z3s are heavily undervalued and I got to use that to my advantage and pick up something like this. And you can too, for under $10,000, which is, which blows my mind, especially compared to something like an NA Miata, which a good condition one will get you in the 30s, which, yeah. The second thing that I do want to say that I love about this car is the surprising amount of practicality that you have in it. You have this storage compartment here, which can store a phone, as demonstrated right here. See? Uh, you have two cup holders here. These don't come with the car. The previous owner actually made these, with, but they work perfectly. So you're supposed to have two cup holders, but I actually get four. Uh, little coin holder here. And then you have two storage compartments right here. That's the size of that one. It can fit my wallet perfectly and another one here which can actually fit a lot of stuff in it right now i have an obd2 scanner in here a few pamphlets uh, a spare bmw logo and a spare light along with that if you put the top up you have this entire area right here to use for storage and it can fit quite a few things it's not recommended that you really use it because 
Well, obviously you have a soft top back here. If you have anything larger, you could potentially rip the soft top itself, which is not advisable. And it's definitely not a good day if you do that. We also can't forget the actual trunk of the car, which is really spacious, may I add. A lot more space than something like a Miata. For one example of how spacious this has been is I've managed to fit a tuxedo in here, shoes, a backpack, two grocery bags worth of stuff, and a few more things, including everything that you see right here. So I've obviously talked about uh, how the car looks and all that, but I haven't really talked much about how it drives. And I love how it drives. Uh, one example of that is how easy it is to maneuver this car. And what I mean by that is, well, prime example is actually today. When I was getting the Z3 out, uh, I had to maneuver the car in between uh, one car that was parked on a curb and another car or truck that was parked on the other side of the road. So I had very little room to get this car in between those two. And the Z3 was able to do it very easily and very sufficiently. Along with that, I just love how the car handles. The car handles amazingly. It can take very sharp turns very quickly. I've seen this in the past. I've taken it down some back roads and it could do, it could do amazing. And I mean, that's how they design these BMWs. Uh, I drove the M4 that I showed in a previous video before and that car can also handle amazingly. But when you combine BMW signature handling with a very small car, you're in for a really nice treat. And that's what this is. So the final thing that I do like about this car is just how different it is from everything else on the road. Where I live, there's one other Z3 and that's about it. But this car does get recognized a lot more, even within uh, the car community of where I live. When, er when everyone else has Miatas or if they're feeling adventurous, maybe an S2000, my Z3 definitely does stick out from the bunch. I've even had people in a lot nicer cars compliment my car and give me a thumbs up. As I'm filming this, there was a guy in a red 996 911 just looking over at me and gave me a thumbs up for my car. I've had people in brand new $200,000 Bentleys give me thumbs ups, uh, people in Corvettes complimenting it, the car. Everyone has a reason to like this car and it definitely does draw a lot of attention. Now that being said, that is also one of the dislikes of this car, just how different it is. Because as we all know, the Z3 is broken. I've said that about 80 times now, but yes, Z3 is broken. Uh, and finding parts has not been the easiest thing for me. Uh, because It's not like a Miata where you can just hop on some, on like eBay, find Miata parts, and there's, a do there's millions of them. These parts are a lot harder to find which is very infuriating for me. The next thing that I hate about this car is more of a problem that's specifically for this Z3. It's not going to be a problem that all Z3 owners share, but it's right there. It is the automatic transmission in this car. So I will say the automatic transmissions in these cars definitely are a major downside to owning a Z3 because these have a four speed automatic transmission from GM. And GM, they don't make the best automatic transmissions, especially mid-2000s GM. And so these cars have been known to have some transmission issues and things like that. Hence the transmission issues that I'm having where the car will lurch itself back and forth. And well, it does become a pain. And I have had times where I thought, why didn't I just get a manual? Why didn't I just learn how to drive a manual? And I could have just saved myself some trouble. But at the end of the day, I got the car that I got, and I love this car still, automatic or manual. I will also say that this car does have a lot of cheap plastics in it, even though it is a BMW. I know this era did have a lot of cheap plastics, things like this, the grab handles. Uh, you also have the cheap plastics that go in the center. Obviously, if this wouldn't really fly in a modern BMW. But cheap plastics aren't the biggest issue. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, it, you don't look at plastics uh, when you're driving your car around, you know? 
One thing that you might look at, or at least I hope you look at while you're driving, is the temperature gauge. Because this car has overheated on me before, in, and it came from the most stupid way possible. So essentially, we have to go under the hood actually. So here we are in the M44 four cylinder, and you might notice a giant gaping hole here. And you might think, oh, something important is supposed to be here. No, it's not. Uh, they put a bl giant black panel here uh, to go from the fan to the engine. And it can be very problematic at times. This won't be here, by the way, in the six cylinders, but I have the four cylinder version. So it is here. But what will happen is if you have, your, if you have certain AC controls on, heat will be trapped in, this, in that black plastic and go to the engine causing it to overheat. It's happened to me once before and I had and the previous owner had to explain to me that I have to keep it in a chilled setting or like keep the AC chilled uh, for it to actually not overheat. So instead we just got rid of the plastic bit so I can not have to freeze to death whenever I'm driving this car. So the final problem is more of a me problem really but it's that I cannot drive this car actually with shoes on. Uh, if I try and drive this car with shoes on, uh, I'm gonna hit, my knees will hit the steering wheel. So if you guys have seen uh, previous videos and saw that I'm driving without, without shoes on or with slides on, which by the way, why are you doing that? <laughs> Please don't look at my feet when I'm driving. Uh, but if you somehow were keen-eyed enough for that, yeah, I drive mainly, I drive this car with slides on uh, because it's a lot more comfortable and I don't hit the steering wheel. And just like that, today's video is over. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, honestly, it felt good to just talk about the car a little bit. I haven't really had much time to spend with the car, so it's great that I got to enjoy it a little bit more. But yeah, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. Uh, regardless of how you feel, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you want to keep watching more of these videos, be sure to leave a subscribe. Uh, yes, I said leave a subscribe. Let's go with it. But yeah, hope you guys have a great day. Peace.